designer Cindy McCain and her take on her husband's stunning choice of a running mate. To serve as vice president besides such a man would be the privilege of a lifetime. When I spoke with Mrs. McCain on the trail in Pennsylvania yesterday, she began by telling me what it was like behind the scenes on the team's first bus trip. It was a lot of fun. As you know, we are a large family, and they have a large family. We had a lot of fun with kids yesterday and had a lot of fun getting to know each other, the families. I just, I'm so proud of my husband. I think he's made a marvelous choice. He told the radio station here in Pittsburgh that mm -hmm. he didn't want to make the choice until you got back mm -hmm. from Georgia. A mm -hmm. And I think you met with Governor Palin right before her final meeting mm -hmm. with Senator McCain. Mm -hmm. What made you think this is the right pick? I just, knowing my husband and knowing his spirit and the way he operates and what he thinks, uh, they, and then having, getting to know her a bit, they're a perfect match. They're a perfect How match so? in this, because she's a reformer and she thinks outside the box the way my husband does. They think they think about what's best for the country. Let's you know the uh, Washington is just a quagmire of a mess right now, and that both of them have been serious reformers. And the governor, particularly where she's been in the state of Alaska, what she's done, gone up against her own party, her own government in the state of Alaska. I mean, they're. Couldn't be a better match for my husband. You know what Democrats are saying. Uh, it's a desperate choice. She's just not ready to serve as commander in chief. No, no, no. I completely disagree, and I know my husband does too. She is heavily experienced in, in what she has done. She was she started out like everybody else. Member of the PTA, small government at home, then a mayor, now the governor. She comes with the kind of experience behind her, and also by I might add, a son who is about to deploy to Iraq. She comes with way more experience in it. What than did you tell her about that? Because of course you have a son. Yeah, serving. I did. I did. Uh, I asked her. Uh, you know, how? You know, how do you feel about this? Are Are you? You know, this is two things you have to do: is not only possibly be a vice presidential candidate, but also you know listen and worry about your son. And she looked me square in the eye and she said, "You know something? I'm a mother. I can do it." But she has no national security experience. You know, she her, her, the experience that she comes from is is with what she's done in the government, and also remember, Alaska is the closest part of our continent to Russia. So it's not as if she doesn't understand what's at stake here. It's also about making decisions and uh, and and being targeted in what she thinks. She has a, she has a great mind and she has a, a a very serious direction in where she goes. Let's talk about your national security experience. You made an extraordinary trip this week yeah. uh, while the Democrats were at their convention in Denver. You went mm -hmm. to Georgia. Mm -hmm. Why now? Well, number one, I couldn't get in any earlier. As you know, but Georgia is in a state of turmoil with what's happened. I saw thousands and thousands of refugees and heard the stories and watched their eyes and their and saw their, their desperation and what's going on. I mean, when you talk to a mother who says, my child was raped, I mean, it, it's, it's despicable what's going on. And what, what did you hope to accomplish with your trip? Making sure that the Georgians know that the United States of America is by their side. But I don't represent the government or anything, but, but from a humanitarian aspect, uh, it's very important that we continue to, to get aid in. As you know, the Russians are blocking us at every point. And we have to worry about these people surviving uh, a winter. And of course, the landmine issue uh, is is critical. They, everything is mined. You saw what happened on the railroad tracks. I mean, these guys are, 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 are bad guys. And what do you think, what more do you think we should be doing right now to address the situation? Well, from a humanitarian aspect, to continue the pressure uh, with regards to getting aid in, encouraging our neighbors to do the same thing, and mo more importantly, keeping the pressure on. This is a democracy. It's a, it's a wonderful young democracy. We, we, we can't let it go. We can't let uh, you know, uh, a, 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 a country come back in and take it back down to, to uh, a Soviet-style government. The, this is democracy, and that's what we're all about. You told Time Magazine that this is the kind of work that makes you tick. Yeah. How so? I love doing this kind of work. It's part of my fiber, and uh, I've told other people. I think years ago, when I first became a mother, I mean, I began to see things through different eyes, and. Uh, when I see mothers looking to me or anybody else that's there from a humanitarian aspect and and desperate, I mean, the only thing you want as a mom is for your kids to be healthy and safe. And and uh, when I see other mothers look at me and ask the same question, I mean, I I can't 
I have to. I have to help. And, and, and if your husband does win in November, was what we saw this week a model of what you'd like to do as First Lady? Yes. Yeah, and more so. And more so. I think it's important. Um, the United States is the best at what we do. We're, we're the ones that give the most and give the earliest every time something happens. And uh, I'd like to continue that and, and also encourage others to get involved. You don't have to cross an ocean to be of help. While you were in Georgia, the Democrats, as you know, were having uh, mm -hmm. their convention. And they were not shy at all about putting your wealth, your family's houses, front and center. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you all remember that girl from Kansas who said, there's no place like home. Well, in John McCain's version, there's no place like home, or a home, or a home, or a home. Fair? No. Listen, my father built, he had nothing. He and my mother sold everything they had to raise $10,000. Now, that was a lot of money then. Now, for what my father built, it's not much. My father is the great American dream. And that's what we want for every American, the, abil the ability with hard work to be able to build a business, support your family, and provide in a way that's, that's good. Uh, I'm proud of what my dad and my mother did and what they built and left me. And when Barack Obama says the problem is that John McCain just doesn't get it, because he's out of touch because of this. My husband was a Navy boy. He, he, his father and mother were in the Navy. I mean, there's nothing elitist about that. I'm offended by Barack Obama saying that about my husband. He, he grew up, you know, with, in his family, traveling all over the country, being stationed everywhere, uh, and watching his father leave for years at a time uh, so to go to work. So you think he went too far? I do. I do. I really do. And what do you hope to do? on Wednesday night when you address the convention? Oh, introduce my family, number one. Uh, let people know a little, a little bit, not only about me, but about what makes me tick and why I'm here, and obviously why I support my husband and why I think he'd be a marvelous president. Mrs. McCain, thank you very much. Thank you.